Hey everyone, Nigel here again from uh, Nigel's Modelling Bench. Um, I want to start by saying I've just looked at my um, subscriber count and I've hit a thousand. 23rd of January 2019, 1,000 subscribers. I am so chuffed. Thank you so much, guys. Please keep coming. Don't don't unsubscribe. Please watch and tell your friends and share and everything. Um, let's just make this channel huge, huh? Uh, right, I've got a new um, kit for you today for um, a review. This is one I've been waiting for for a long, long time, and it's a um, it's a beautiful model. If you're looking at this box front and thinking that looks familiar, yeah, I believe these this company they're a German company. I believe they've used Tacom's molding company and, and artistry because you can see here Jason. If you remember, I did that. Um, that uh, freeze cran crane that was also box art by Jason. So I think what's basically happened is they've gone in with Tacom and and they're using them for making their kits. I just hope they get the sprue connection points of better. Um, so I'm also pleased to say that I've got this kit to review before Brett from High Altitude Scale Modeling. Um, over the last few months, it seems that he gets a kit and a few days later I get the same one and review it. Um, well, I've beat him to it this time. No doubt he's going to get this. I'll bet he does. Um, so, um, just will have to look at his site and see. Um, so, yeah, well, let's have a look around the box. Uh, we've got on the side here, we've got, um, as we can see here, Das Werk is a German company. And um, it's made in China. So, it's engineered in Germany, made in China. And the kit number is DW35003. And we've got the options here for unknown unit 1941, error capated on the side there, an unknown unit post 43 in the tricolour scheme. We've got an unknown unit Berlin Parade 1941 and then an unknown, unknown unit 1939. So it's a very nice strong rigid box. We can see here we've got the, the uh, cargo hoops up or not. And then here we've got details about the trailer. Something that is very interesting about this kit, which other manufacturers need to take on board, you can have it unloaded, neutral, or heavy loaded. So they're giving you different suspension parts to allow you to model it that way, which is um, which is really good because, sorry guys, I had another coffee with it there. Right, where was I? This is really good because, um, you know, it, you can put a tank in the back of this. You don't want to put a tank in the back of here and then have it sort of you know sat there with its fully suspension fully raised because it obviously would have been quite compressed and then you've got a, a trailer here um sort of lightweight trailer nothing like you get with the tamiya famo but uh, still big enough for a tank um and then you've got all the, the telling you all down here you've got brass rod and bending jig for the roof bows that's just beautiful optional suspension parts um truck bed size and tailgate can be configured up or down as you can see here, uh, you can have the roof convertible. Um, you've got a wide range of accessories available as separate items. So weighted, weighted wheels, hardtop roof, wood grain decals, burnished chains. Please learn more visiting Das Werk. So they're doing some chains and decals and all that, but their additional extras are not going to be in the kit. So um, round to the other end, that's just the same as the other. So let's have a quick look inside. It's a lovely, lovely quality box. Oh look, I've got some treats. <laughs> I bought this kit from um, Model Emporium. It's, Frey, uh, it's Frey's business. Um, very, very good company. Very, very quick delivery. And there's an air of quality about it. Um, this box came in another box, which was probably 8 inches wider, 8 inches deeper, and about 2 inches thicker. And it was all packed with... Um, with you know the watsits and that so you know really really well packed very very well wrapped up and everything absolutely wonderful really really nice and um yeah that's the company there model emporium dot shop and uh i'd really recommend get buying stuff from them really good and also looks like he's put in there well looks like he has he's put in a bag of haribo and a lollipop for me um, if you buy an outside the UK, you may not get this because I don't think they can send it abroad or it may just be United States. Um, so there we go. There's that in there, which is really nice. And then straight away, we've got a correction sheet by the look of it. German. Now, oh, here we go. Is the English. So, um, 
you know, so there's been a few errors. I mean, you're going to get this with a new company and their the CAD design and everything. Um, you can read that there. You can pause it if you like. So what have we got in the box? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sprues. Clear sprue. We've got some tires here for the truck, tires for the trailer, and our instructions, which is a fairly thick, fairly hefty manual. In fact, there's two manuals in there, so there's probably one for the truck, one for the trailer, and we've got the brass rod in there as well, and some decals. So I'll we'll get all this out of the uh, packs and we'll have a look at it. Right, so I've got the instruction bag open and um, got these brass rods out. Um, these are 0.8 brass rods and there's six of them. I'm guessing they're 150 mil long, are they? Something like that. Um, about 175 mil. Um, there's probably three or four quid there alone anyway. On the subject of money, uh, I was surprised actually. I saw this kit on eBay. I think it was about 80 pounds or 75 pounds or something. And on that model emporium, it was like a 65. So, um, yeah, it's the cheapest place I saw anyway. Um, quite a comprehensive decal sheet or decal sheet for a, for a military kit. Um, we've got the, uh, the, the logo there and then we've got some different number plates and everything here. Um, we've got all our different numbers here. Funny, they need to give you a code for the number to tell you which is which. So, obviously on the instructions, the decal... Uh, call out will say number six number 37 or 32 is that for six <laughs> so yeah um and then we've got these flashes here this here erica alf erlov is um actually erica on vacation which goes on the doors of the 1939 model i believe it was so um yeah um i'm guessing stay 50 meters behind is it or overall length is 50 meters Form badge there, a different type of form badge there. I noticed there's a, I had a quick look from the sprues just now, and there's um, a nice instrument panel, which I guess one of those could go on there. Not about instrument panel, we've got some gauges there as well. So for a military kit, that's a pretty comprehensive um, decal sheet there. Right, so let's have a look at the instructions. Um, very glossy, which is really nice, but awful for the, uh, for the reviewer. Right, pain in the bum. Another thing I want to say as well, I'm trying this using the uh, iPhone headphones and microphones. So if you think the sound quality is better, please let me know. I've had a couple of complaints about poor sound quality. So yeah, please let me know if you think it's better. If it's any worse, also let me know. Um, and I'll need to invest in something perhaps. But I've seen them on, on uh, YouTube for like, on YouTube, on Amazon, for like £1.80 or something. So it's a nice sort of A4 size book, as I say, also glossy all the way through, which is a pain. Um, so right, let's get into this uh, this book and see where we're going. So we've got our call outs here with all our different um, logos and everything for different uh, what they mean during through the uh, through the build. Color call outs, which is nice to see. We've got our RAL colors called out. Um, we've got Tamiya, Mr. Hobby H, um, which is the Aqueous colours. Ammo of Mig, Vallejo, which is a great paint, Humbrel and Mission Models. So I'll be using those two, well sorry those three, so Tamiya, Mr Hobby and Viejo. I have a few Viejos. I tend to prefer Viejos for brush painting, Tamiya for an airbrush and this for either. Um, so yeah then we got into some historical summary so I'll pause it there and you, well, you can pause that there and you can read it if you like. And we can see there we've got the truck there with a tank in the back and it's actually got a tank on the trailer as well. So that's some more there. Heavy duty truck this one. And um, even though if looking at this one here it talks about suspension that's got a tank in the back and that suspension doesn't look like it's sagging that much. So we've got a sprue call out there. Don't tell me that's it. That, that's, all, that's all the sprues for this, uh, for this truck. And if you go back to my um, Lanchester, you'll see this uh, instruction manual is very, very similar to that. Extremely similar. 
um, almost wing that wings like. So what they've done, they've highlighted everything in blue that you're going to be fitting in this stage and everything that's grey is um, from the last stage. So that's how we're going on there, making up the steps there. This is really high quality, really thick paper. Um, and then we've got some, uh, that's unusual. Yeah, be careful of that. You're putting these on here and then over the page it's telling you which way they go. So you're making sure that the lugs are on the back towards the rear of the chassis as shown there. But they're showing it over the page, not actually on the page where you're putting them on. Uh, then we're putting the axles together and it's showing you the, the drive line in, in, uh, the orientation that should be there. And then we're looking at the different suspensions. So we've got 15, 16 and 17. And I think that was something called out on the addendum sheet. So be careful there. Um, so you fit in all your different leaf springs according to the weight you want to carry. Uh, we don't get a full engine in this, we just get a sump, so that's uh, that's fine. And then we're putting our our, um, our axle together with steering. It's telling you, so it's telling you to be careful with the glue and don't actually, yeah, they're telling you not to make make sure those blue parts there, those spindles don't get glued. Then we're adding the axle to the chassis, starting to build up the cab with the seat, doing the instrument panel. Yeah, there's that form badge I was talking about. It looks like you don't get a decal for that. But they're telling you to put the decals into those positions there. Adding on the cab. Then we're building up the uh, the bonnet or the hood. And then we've got the toolbox here for the side. Very, very simple instructions. Very, very um, laid out. Just a couple of parts per step, which is nice. And then we've got the, they call it rubber part, the tyre going onto the wheel. I have to see if you can actually fit the tyre onto the wheel after rather than do it like that. And then fitting the rear wheels on. Adding the steering gear. Um, yeah, that's going to be an issue. If you want to make your steering gear work properly, you'll have to pivot all this as well. Which I will probably do. If I do a build of this online, then I'll show you that, much like I did on the Scammels. Um... Then we've got the cargo bed there being assembled. We can see here's a proper picture of a tank coming off of the actual back of the truck with the ramps and everything. I'm not sure if you get the ramps in here. Um, right hand side toolboxes, they're going up under the back. Then the mud guards or fenders, headlights, bits and pieces now going on. And now we can decide whether we want to have, we're having doors, got towing equipment there. And then we can have a canopy on or we can have it convertible. So we're going to add the canopy there. And then we've got a jig here, which is a really nice touch for making up these frames. Um, and what they're telling you to do is drill out for the, if you want to use these brass frame wires, drill out to put them on. If you want to put a cover on, it sounds like you can get it on their, um, on their website, daswerk.com. And then they're telling you different loading examples. So... You've got different, um, there's a flak pants in one, or ein, and then we've got the, uh, oh, the, um, the little commander's car on the back of there, 88mm gun, there's lots of stuff that you could use, It'd be great to set up, because all of this stuff is light, I mean if you've, you saw me do the build of that um, Freeze crown last week, you could have the crane lifting one of these up damaged into the back of the truck. Um, and there it is there. It's quite a long, thin thing, isn't it? Quite a long, slender truck. And these are all different um, colour guides. Unfortunately, they're all unknown units, so... I don't know how you're going to get around that one. And then finally here. And then here we've got, just like with... Um, like you get in the uh, in the back of Wingnut Wings, you've got the, uh, the crew that put the kit together. So, um, project manager, CEO, 3D modelling... Technical consultant, graphic design, and general info. So there we go www.dask verk models.com. So I have to get on there and have a look. I'll send them an email to say I've done this review and hopefully they'll reply. <laughs> I think I'll probably get that some extras for it as well. Um, so then we've got the instruction manual for the trailer. So obviously they're going to be doing that as an individual, and this is an individual. So we've got the same thing there with our colour callouts and all the different manufacturers. 
So we're starting off here with the wheels. Oh, sorry, there's some trailer pictures there. The Germans were keen on this having removable axles, weren't they? Like to give themselves a lot of work to do. Um, and then we've got the the tires going onto the axles then, and we've got like the front carriage assembly with the pivot on it. I'm guessing, showing you there. And then we're going to build up the actual bed itself. Um, We've got to do some cutting there, so we've got to decide here whether we're going to have it in loading or in transport road mode. And these are obviously ramps that slide out. Uh, here we've got some more genuine pictures as well. That's the interesting thing. I don't know what that is on there. Maybe someone can tell me in the comments. I don't know what that is. That's, um, that's an interesting looking truck, or tank should I say. And here we've got it here being pulled by a FAMO by the look of it. Well, it's not a FAMO, is it? Some is that a FAMO? I'm not sure. Um, and then we've got the forward ramps or ramp housing, and there's a code there you can link to a video on there. Um, so saying you weren't that far already, well done. Time for a break. How about a book? <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. Um, there's another video here they're linking you to. Telling you to remove the uh, sprue points there, adding on the mud guards. This is all very similar to the 88mm now. Um, we've got the front trolley going on there. Equipment assembly. And then we've got, we're going to decide on our loading configuration. So you've got it in travel there. So you've got towing behind the truck with a tank on it. Travel configuration one. So it looks like you can actually put a ramp. So you can lift those ramps up so you can have something longer. So if you have a small tank on there, you have it like this. And if you want something longer, it can come up the front wheels. They've got a FAMO on there that can come up over the top. Um, and then we've got the loading configuration. So they've given us plenty of options there, plenty of pictures to back up what they're claiming you can do. And then uh, colour guide and decal instructions, which is all nice. Then we've got a coffee mug splash here and again the team that put this together so there's the instructions let's have a look at some plastic right let's start by looking at the clear sprue um, this is an unopenable bag it's sealed so i don't want to get the parts out but we can see here that the the clear parts are extremely clear beautifully molded and uh, mostly protected in their own bag so and the headlight lenses Look very nice as well. Much better than those on that kit I built recently, which I shall mention no names of. Tires here, vinyl rubber. Um, you get six of them. Got one out here. You can see we've got some nice um, sidewall detail on there. Uh, they are quite skinny, but they would have been. Um, the skinnier tires would have been better for traction on slippery ground. Um, and then we've got the, the writing on the side. We've got the, the web left in there for us to cut out, which is nice. Um, so many kit manufacturers now take these out and, and hack the kit up while they do it. Are you listening Ravel? Um, a Ravel 4 GT. Tires were hacked up, so I wrote to them and they said, that's all right, we'll send you another set, sir, no problem. It was only about a week later, fair play to them. I had another set of tires come, but they were hacked up as well. So, uh, And if you look at Paul on ISM, I think he's got the same problem with... Um, with some of his BMAX kits. It looks like they've stopped actually hacking them out now. Anyway, I digress. So here's sprue D, and I'm gonna look at these sprues in no particular order, it's just how they came out of the bags. Um, so it's obvious here, this is our main chassis, exhaust, we've got some mud guards here, um, front axle, some cargo bay parts. So let's have a closer look at these. Um, I think straight away we can see our Tacom heritage here. Um, very very crisp molding very very sharp they've got this on the surface molding again which is nice which I like as long as they don't put it on the surface that you need to look at which they did all over that freeze crown if you remember so very very slight ejector pin marks on the inside of the chassis um, which won't take much to remove if you can be bothered to remove them at all and they've got our cargo bed detail that oh, this is a toolbox isn't it very nice latch detail on there, it's really nice, very crisp, very clean inside the mud guards, a couple of ejector pin marks in there to sand out but nothing much. 
Got some detail there on that panel. And then we've got the um, under the cargo bed there. Very, very nice. Some hooks of some sort going on the uh, on the bodywork itself. All very nice, all very crisp, clean, flash free. Lovely. And then we've got this sprue here. This is sprue A. Um, you get two of these. And here you can see we've got our three different uh, rear leaf spring layouts for uh, what's that? That's going to be unload, what's well, unloaded, medium load, and heavy load, um, which is a great, great touch. Really nice to see. And then we've got our wheels here, rims. Uh, is that some differential parts there? Cargo parts, some suspension little hooks, and everything. Let's have a closer look at these. And uh, start looking at the wheels and that detail on there is superb, really nice. Imagine a wash on there, that'll come up lovely. Beautiful wood grain detail, really, really clean and sharp that is. God, yes. You all know how much I love my wood grain if you follow my channel. Um, lovely bulk detail on, the, uh, on those covers there. Leaf springs with no sig marks. How have they managed that? Every other manufacturer manages to get, and they've got a pin on the back. So they've managed to mould that leaf spring with a pin on the back and still have no sink mark. And it's in one piece, it's not in two halves. Wow. This is an impressive kit. Already I'm really impressed. Um, really, really beautiful. Look at these little handles and stuff. Well, there's some flash on the sprue that you can see there. There's nothing on the parts that you can speak of. Not sure about seam lines, what people call burring. It's not burring, it's a seam line. Um, it's a little tiny lifting eyes there. Thoughtfully done. They've got the ejector pin as a stub, so you can cut that stub off and then sand it while it's still on the sprue. Really nice. Or what you could do is cut it off the sprue, attach it to clean up your sanding point, then use this part as a handle to hold it to put it on, and then once it's dry, nib it off and... Uh, and clean it up then. I'm full of tips me. <laughs> so here we've got the sprue connection points on these rims are on the outside edge which is nice and on the wheels as well they're on the outside edge so they're not going over onto the onto the front face so that's pretty cool which I like. You've got another large sprue here. This is B. Let's get it the right way round for you guys. This is B. So we've got here the main cargo bag. We've got more wood grain. There's canvas roof there. Looks like cab floor, hood, bonnet, bulkhead, rear fenders and side panels. Um, so let's have a look at this first. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's going to be nice. That's going to come up beautiful. Coat of um, XF55 on there, buff, like a matte light brown or whatever. Let it go off for a day, give it a coat of matte varnish. Rub that with brown oil paint. Perhaps give it some different colours here and there. Leave it half an hour, wipe it off with a cloth and then stain it in certain areas. Oh, it's going to look great. If I do it, I'll show you how I do it. Or look back at my um, Model T ambulance build. On that one I actually added the wood grain as well so rather than uh, just uh, painting the plastic parts. Yeah, here's the rear fenders. Really, really nice. Lovely canvas roof there which has got some lovely moulding on it. Cab floor. Exquisite, beautiful detailing on there. Really impressed with this kit. Really impressed. No openings on the louvers. Bit of a shame but they are quite small to be fair. So here's our typical Tacum. Z pins on the back. It's got a little bit of some detail or some fitting marks underneath the floor there. There's our jig for folding the, the brass rods to make the roof, which is a which is pretty cool. I don't know if they come out to the right length or if you have to put them back in the jig and trim them. You probably have to trim them. Um, steering linkages there. Very nice, lovely hinge detail. Really, really nice kit. Of course, remember guys, I'm showing you this kit here at the box. No one knows what it goes together like. Well, I think Andy Hob Andy Andy's Hobby Headquarters is building this at the moment. So if you want to see how it goes together, go and look on his channel. Um, 
and then this is the final sprue for the truck and we can see we've got the engine gearbox there um, some cross members by the look of it that seat something now radiator grill and then we've got some prop shafts bumper steering wheel other bits and pieces here so let's have a close look at these start off with the engine sump nice detail on that no doubt some will come up with a resin engine for this um, there was that the seat there and that's I don't know the radiator grill there very very nice nice fawn emblem on there yeah lovely And if you're looking at my disgusting fingernails, guys, you'll be pleased to know that I've got some stuff now to stop me biting them. So hopefully, in a few weeks, they won't look so bad anymore. Um, some nice pedal detail there. Tiny little parts. Steering linkage by the look of it. Prop shaft to go between the axles. God only knows what that is there. Some more brackets. Brackets with pipe work on them. Steering wheel, oh that's nice, yeah very sharp, very crisp mold on the steering wheel, bumper, prop shaft again nicely molded used J's, UJ should I say, steering arms here, yeah, lovely, lovely kit, right so that's the plastic for the truck, now I'll put that away and I'll get the plastic out for the trailer. Just three sprues for the well. There's actually four sprues. You get two of these, and then there's um, and then there's three others. Um, <clears throat> sorry, two others. Uh, so on here we've got some wheels, obviously, for the trailer. Some hooks, slide bolted part down here, and then there's sorts of various little bits and pieces for boxes and ramps and stuff. And as I say, there's two of these, so all this is doubled up. So again, we've got this lovely wood grain detail on here, which is really, really nice, really sharp, really crisp, beautiful, um, beautiful hook detail on there. These obviously spring, sprung loaded things or spring mounts for something. Not sure what they are. And we've got the wheel rims here. Now here, the sprue connection points do go onto the front of the rim, but they don't go over the edge. So that's okay. And uh, yeah, they've they've kept their um, their wild mold man away from this one. They haven't got the sprue points on that, like on that freeze crown. They would have had the sprue points on the side and going onto this face, and the back face would have been completely clean. I don't, don't get it. I've seen it on a few Tacom kits, and they need to stop it now. Um, yeah, really, really nice, really crisp, clean, beautiful, fresh. Really, lovely nut detail there. Look, really looking forward to building this. Is that a short shot? No, that's actually supposed to be like that. Yeah, lovely. Very, very nice. Very nice indeed. So this is sprue G. I think these sprue letters are all wrong according to the instructions. So um, I think the instructions call out for A, B, C, and these are. G, F and H or something. Um, so this is the, looks like the main chassis of the, the trailer itself. And then we've got the bed. It is quite small. Some mud guards there. More of the chassis. The A-frame for towing. Uh, fifth wheel type pivot thing. Uh, a bit more wood grain deck. Axles there. Let's have a close look at this one. Very, very nice. Very, very crisp, clean. No real seam line to speak of. Um, it's also a fairly simple build, this kit. It looks like it would be great for a beginner as well because it looks like there's not nothing too difficult in it. It's, it's not over-engineered. There aren't a million parts that you get in a mini art kit. It's all crispy moulded in the square. So, you know, it's um, I reckon this would be suitable for a, for a fresh starter. Probably not a first kit, but certainly a second or third. And, um, yeah, really, really crisp, lovely, lovely detail. Nice to see that's moulded in one piece rather than in seven, you know. Lovely. Really good. 
And here's our final sprue. I know, guys, I'm sorry. This is the final sprue. We're nearly at the end. <laughs> here. Um, lots and lots of detail parts here. So we've got some little tiny leaf springs there. Um, is that a jack? It looks like. Some brackets there with the bolt head detail. Little spring mounts by the look of it. We've got some uh, support brackets there. And then some more detail here. It's detail on both sides of the sprue. Really, really nice. Lovely detail on there. Yeah, lovely on there. The, the bolt head detail on there, on there. It's really crisp and fresh on there. You can see. You can imagine this done with the um, in a grey, washed with a blue, and then um, and then washed with a black. Well, highlight, sorry, filtered with a blue and then washed with a black. It would uh, look stunning. Really nice. So anyway, there we have it. Okay, so that's the end of the sprues. Uh, let's just have a look at the tyres. Uh, bag of tyres here. We get nine of these. I've got one out. Um, there we can see we've got some lovely sidewall detail on there. Nice hair on there. They're nice and round. Um, no real distortion where the sprue gate goes, um, no shred ass to speak of, but I'm guessing that's how they were. So I know a lot of trailers didn't have tread in those days. Um, so that is that. That is the uh, I was attacking. <laughs> that is the Daskverk uh, in cooperation with Custom Scale um for an l900 including sdah 115 so that's the truck and the trailer um, with all its features beautiful beautiful kit if you're into your armor or german armor whatever or even just into your trucks i really suggest getting this it is gorgeous this, the, the the molding's lovely the instructions are lovely the fact you get these brass rods for the top i mean i've never seen that in an off-the-shelf kit before um, really really nice really well thought out and as, obviously as I said for putting it together I don't know um, I haven't built it but as I say Andy Andy's hobby headquarters is building it right now um, so yeah I've had a look online you can get this kit from Model Emporium where I got mine and there's a discount code you can use there if you want to and what I noticed was on the um, on his website this kit is actually 69.99 i looked on ebay and it was 80 pounds so and he also does free postage so you could get this for like i don't know 66.50 is it so um, so yeah 66 pound and uh and then get free postage as well so i think for 66 pounds in the uk this is a bargain when you compare this to the price of the tamiya famo with the tank transporter or indeed you know the dragon wagon or whatever absolute bargain it's you know and if you look at the scammel tank transporter that's like nearly 60 pounds um you know we, we're we're living in a golden age we've got some really good value really lovely kits around so go and check this one out i would suggest you build it it is beautiful so thanks for watching please like please subscribe and keep your eyes open i may be doing a build on this very soon Bye bye